I wonder if, um, I think normal type moves work on ghost types if you use moves like Foresight on them too. So, NANI? Did Haunter just KO itself? Okay. What the fuck are you doing? Thanks? <laughs> I mean, you do know that I could just switch out and get rid of the curse, right? Right? Fucking idiot. Whatever. Gaming, and are you ready to get that fourth badge? Because I am. Oh, let's play Pokemon Silver! Yes, we are in Ecritic City, and it's time to get our fourth badge. Last time, I got myself an Eevee from our old friend Bill from Red, Blue, and Yellow. But yeah, um, got me my two Eevees here. Got an Espeon named Sakura, and a Vaporeon named Marine. So yeah, we got two sexy Eeveelutions with us now. So, yeah, got Guts, Saya, and Aggro, and Siege. Now, one change I made with Aggro was I got another return TM, and, well, I taught it return. Seeing as Aggro has been with us just as long as, as my starter has, return is perfect for it. Obviously, return could probably really end up being the strongest move in the game. That's one of the reasons why I don't... Oh, that's one of the reasons why I don't want to evolve my Cyndaquil. Because even though Cyndaquil is in his base form and stuff like that, even though he won't have the, you know, the, like extreme stats as he would as a Typhlosion and stuff, well, Cyndaquil is my favorite Pokemon. So if I'm going to have him as my starter and keep him in, in his base form, I'm going to do that. Kind of like how, you know, you're stuck with Ash's Pikachu in yellow without evolving it. Yeah, that's how I'm going to treat with regards to my Cyndaquil. So there you go. Those that know, know. But yeah, you know, having returned will be good because it's a very, very strong move based on loyalty. So as such, it will be a really good asset to him because, well, even in his base form, return will deal some really great damage. That being said, though, what's up, dude? Not only the Kimono Girls great dancers, they're also skilled at Pokemon. I always challenge them, but I never, yet, but I never even leave a scratch on them. Damn, how tough are they? Lad, if you could defeat all the kimono girls, I'll give you a gift. A gift? Hmm, alright. Challenge accepted. Right on, right on. Hmm, so right on even doing in here. In any case, we got the five kimono girls here. Now, take a look at what all their Pokemon are. First things first. You have a lovely Pokemon, darling. May I see them in battle? Uh, sure thing, madam. Sure thing. Let's do it! Battle time. Now, all of the Kimono Girls, five of them, all have an evolution. Yes! Speaking of evolutions, now we're dealing with them now. So, there you go. Rish on! Ooh! Yes! Look how much damage that did! I mean, and it's not just because Siege is a, is a, a, a slightly higher level than Flareon. I mean, despite the fact that Flareon's stats kind of suck ass anyway. I mean, come on! Return is dealing some really good damage. I could've just went with Dig and one-shotted it, but that would've took too long. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty much. Alright, next Kimono Girl. Let's see what you got. Espeon! Not bad, not bad. Unfortunately. Uh, bruh. Okay, let's try this again! Diamond G! That's Fire Blast and Pokemon's. For those that don't know, you know now. Hashtag Confetti. Hmm. I'm kinda shocked it survived that. Espeon is a tough. Espeon is a tough. Uh, guy. Hurry up! There you go. Got all day. Not trying to rush your butt, but I kind of need to get that hit in. But yeah, good job, good job. What do you mean you almost had me? You barely did much damage to my Cyndaquil at all, and you're using Espeon. That's embarrassing. 
Like, bro, come on now. Oh, I almost had you. Really? Really? Alright. Alright. Whatever you say. In any case. Hmm. Oh, you're a cute trainer. Would you like the battle? Yeah, let's do it. More kimono action. Let's see what you got. Here we got. Hmm, Vaporeon. Perfect. Sakura! Now, let me show you how to use a Espeon, lady. Sakura! Ah! No, no. Oh my gosh. That will never get old. I just fucking love that. I am thinking of probably I am thinking of doing a re a redo of, of Pokemon Coliseum at some point in the at some point in the future. Because when I did Pokemon Coliseum, I did that like a few years ago on the channel. And of course back then I didn't have nearly the following I have now. So as such Coliseum, you know, couldn't shine as much. Plus I didn't really do most of the things I wanted to do in Coliseum the first time around. So I'm thinking of maybe doing a um a replay of, of Coliseum in the future. Not only that, but with XD Gale of Darkness, I know I already did XD. And stuff like that. But I did not beat the post game of XD. XD has a pretty good post game. And it's uh, more so wrapping up, you know, doing the rest of the Coliseums that open up after you defeat um, Greeble and stuff like that, you know, the final boss, but, you know, there you go. That being said, though, DOOM! And oh yeah, there's Umbreon for you in case you wanted to see it. Ironically enough, Umbreon's Japanese name is Blackie. I beg your pardon? Yes, you heard me right. It's literally named Blackie. I know, right? I know, I know. I mean, it may it may sound racist and stuff like that, but you know, <laughs> I'm not the one that named it. So, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Man, that is just sad. Whatever. <sighs> then again, it don't really matter because Umbreon is just that sexy of a Pokemon that. The Japanese name shouldn't really bother you. I mean, you can very well just change the name. Of course, if you're playing the English version of the game, you don't have to worry about that shit at all. So, it won't even be an afterthought to you. <sighs> now, could I you? There you go. I was thinking of getting Jolteon for this playthrough. But you know what? When I do my Pokemon Crystal LP next year, you know, it, you know, to wrap up the Gen 2, um, trilogy and stuff like that, I'm thinking of maybe using Jolteon and Umbreon in my next playthrough. Seeing as I'm using two evolutions now and stuff like that, I might decide to use two other evolutions in my Crystal run next year. So, you never know. In case. Well, old man, I defeated the Kimono Girls. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I know their skill, but they really suck ass at battling. How the hell you had issues with them is beyond me, but whatever. The way you battled, it was like watching a dance. It was a rare treat to see. I want you to have this. Don't worry, take it. All right, ooh! HMO3 Surf! Nice, thank you, Odsai. That is Surf. It's a move that lets Pokemon swim across water. Nice. Is that the reason why you have Rhydon here? Hmm. Now that I think about it, in the anime, uh, there was one filler episode in the Johto Saga where Ash, Misty, and Brock met a, um, met a surfing Rhydon. Huh? If memory serves. I wonder, could this Rhydon be a reference to that anime episode? Like, why would there be a Rhydon in here? Rhinon is a is a huge ass tank, literally. Why would it be inside a dance theater with somebody that can give you the surf HM? There has to be a coincidence there. Well, no, no, no. It it mu it must be a reference. But then again, that episode was probably after Gold and Silver came out. So. Uh, I 
actually, no, 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 because Golden Silver started in, um, in 2000, or the anime, you know what, whatever, <laughs> I'm fucking up my brain just thinking about it, mm. but alright, we got Surf, Surf is very good, I think it has, like, 95 power, let me see, let me check that out real quick, like, let's see, yes, 95 power, such a shame that Surf does get downgraded slightly, um, in Gen 3 onwards, I think, like, they downgrade it to, like, like, 90 power and stuff, why, I have no idea, I mean, it's not like Surf is the strongest water move in the game, or anything like that, no, no, that mantle is reserved for Hydro Pump, at least, not until, um, you know, we get the stronger water moves that come out in later gens, like, What's that one move that, that Waylord can learn in Gen 3? What is it? Water Spout or something like that? I think it it deals some really sexy damage. And then on top of that, you have um Hydro Cannon! That, actually, Hydro Cannon came out in Gen 3. You know what? I, I, I thought it came out in Gen 5. That was stupid. Yeah, because I remember um, those three moves, um, Blast Burn, Frenzy Plant, and Hydro Cannon, all three of those came out with Fire Red and Leaf Green back in 2004. I remember that. Yeah, but it's, it's been so long since I played Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Uh, 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 oh my god. The Confefe's fucking with my head, viewers. It's been so long since I played Fire Red and Leaf Green. And now I think about it, I was planning on doing a Let's Play of, of those games on the channel. Anyway, so you never know, that might be coming soon. Wink, wink. So, there you go. Of course, obviously, I'm going to be playing all the Pokemon games on, on the channel. So, I mean, it's not going to be done overnight, obviously. But I will be getting to Fire Red soon. Very soon. So, there you go. That being said, though, with the Kimono Girls defeated and Surf acquired, let's head to the Ecritique Gym. How's it going? The trainers here have, a secret, have secret motives. If you win, they may tell you some deep secrets about Ecritique. Okay, do I care enough to bother with it? Probably. Oh, how's it going? Can you inflict any damage on our Pokemon? Hmm. Well, I'm certainly going to try. Unfortunately, viewers, this is one of those kind of battles in which, well, you'll find out. Let me show you guys what exactly I mean here. Now, watch. This dude has five Pokemon. But guess what it is? Ghastly. Yes, we are dealing with a ghost type gem this time around. Now, for some odd reason, they do not use any other ghost types outside of the Ghastly line. I mean, we do have Mischievous that debuted in Gen 2, but of course, no one is using Mischievous. They're all spamming Ghastly. This dude has five of them. Yeah. Now, remember, remember we learned Foresight for Guts? Let's try it out. And now I can't escape. But that's fine. I don't I don't intend to. In fact, I don't need to. <laughs> Guts identified Ghastly. It's kinda like using the Ceph scope. A la Gen 1 on Ghastly. Except outside of revealing it, I can kick its ass with fighting moves! What What the fuck? It cut its own HP and put a curse on him. Uh, your funeral. <laughs> But then again, Ghastly's line is already, well, technically dead. Right? So I guess they, you know what, never mind. But yeah, I'm going to take out the rest of Ghastly's off-screen. Most of the other trainers in here all have Ghastly's. Some of them have some Haunters as well, which is the evolved form of Ghastly. So I'll take them on off-screen, and I'll be right back. Alright, viewers of Mac, in any case, now I defeated all the gym trainers, easy as shit by the way, especially if you have Pokemon that have Dark and Psychic type moves, which the Ghastly line is not immune to, so there you go. Now of course you can also hit them with Ground type moves because they're part Poison type, and Levitate does not exist yet, so <laughs> you can take full advantage of their Ground type weakness. Said that after Gen 2, um, the Ghastly line does get Levitate and Ground moves don't even fucking affect them anymore. So there you go. But yeah, the Ecritic Gym has a little puzzle for you to solve, though. Now, if you try to go directly in the middle, 
you'll end up right back at the start of the gym. Now, in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, this is even more shitty. Because it's dark. You know, it's dank as fuck in this place. And you have to defeat the trainers in order to light your path. Just like at the, um, Duke for Gym in Gen 3. So, you know, there you go. That being said, though, in order to deal with this, you have to go in front of the trainers, kick their ass, and then after you do, go in zigzag patterns like this. And that's how you get to the gym leader. It is simple as fuck in Gold, Silver, and Crystal to get to the gym leader, but in Hard Gold and Soul Silver, they kind of turn it... But no, well, not really. They kind of make it slightly more difficult, but not that difficult. It's just, you know, annoying with the dankness. That being said, though, speaking of dank, how's it going, dude? Hmm, good of you to come. Hey, <laughs> shut up. Here in Ecrity, Pokemon have been revered. It's said that legendary Pokemon will appear to a truly powerful trainer. I believe that tale, so I have secretly trained here all my life. As a result, I can now see what others cannot. Hmm, so are you some kind of medium or something? Because the other mediums in your gym kind of suck ass. I wonder if you're any, I wonder if you're any better. Hmm. Just a bit more. With a little more, I can see a future in which I meet the legendary Pokemon. You're going to help me reach that level. And if I don't, <laughs> then well, um, you're not getting that badge. <laughs> Sorry, Morty, but the only one who's going to be meeting those legendaries is going to be me. You're going to be stuck in this gym forever. It's time for a gym battle boss fight. Versus Morty, the leader of the Ecrotique City Gym. I almost choked on my own spit right there. <laughs> now, get um, now Morty has all the ghastly line, just like his gym trainers. Wow, what a shock. He only has, like, maybe a couple po or a few Pokemon that are higher level. I mean, obviously, but two of his Pokemon are, like, a level below some of his um, gym trainers. It's so dumb. But since he's using four, I'm going to be using four in this playthrough. Or rather, in this gym battle. Just like how I usually do for my gym battle runs. But yeah, Ghastly is cheap as shit. But watch out for Curse, because as you saw in that trainer battle, it will it will inflict a curse on your Pokemon. After they inflict the curse on themselves, it's a, Curse will subtly sap your HP every fucking turn. And it will hurt if you don't switch out. But luckily, when you do switch out, you won't have to deal with that shit again. BITE! There you go. I wonder if, um, I think normal type moves work on ghost types if you use moves like Foresight on them too. So... NANI?! Did Haunter just KO itself? Okay. What the fuck are you doing? Thanks! <laughs> I mean, you do know that I could just switch out and get rid of the curse, right? Fucking idiot. Right? <laughs> Whatever. But in any case, here's the bastard of his team. Gengar. Gengar obviously is his ace. And Gengar is not a pushover. Gengar has the Dream Eater Hypnosis combo. And Hypnosis, even though it has shitty accuracy, here it seems to work a lot more than usual. A lot more than usual. I'm not. Sh I, I think we might have some Stadium One shenanigans here too. Never know. Cause even though Gen Two kind of fixed some of the first gens bugs and and um, shenanigans and shit like that. No, there's still some shenanigans in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Stadium Two as well. You see how the second hypnosis too hits. You see that? How how is it supposed how is it this accurate when it has like what 60 um 60% accuracy? So yeah, he will spam this shit over and over and over again. But luckily I got lucky. Now, even if it misses, there is a chance he will still kick your ass. Gengar has the move Shadow Ball, which introduced in Gen 2. Finally, ghost types get a sexy move, because all they had in Gen 1 was fucking Dream Eater or some shit. So, you know, there you go, that was... But not Dream Eater, Nightshade. 
Nightshade. Which dealt damage based on level, I believe. Bruh. Bruh. <sighs> but yeah, Shadow Ball, I think, is 80 power. And it has a chance of lowering special attack. Or rather, special defense. So, yeah, if you get hit by that, um, you're going to be taking a lot of damage. And Gengar's special attack is really good. Bruh, come on! <sighs> How is his hypnosis so much more accurate than mine? It's like Blizzard in Gen 1. When my Ops uses it, it's fucking overpowered and accurate. But when I use it, no, it, it has to miss. That's bullshit. Diamond G! to a cynical Morty, get fucked, get fucked, get good, and then get fucked. You a bitch. <laughs> good job, Siege. Alright, now we got Haunter. Alright, um, let's see, I use Sakura, Agro, Siege. Um, Saya's not gonna be that useful in this fight, so I'm gonna avoid it. So, that being said, though, Marine! Haunter in a pushover. Once you get rid of Ghastly, his Haunter is complete shit. Get it the fuck out of here, baby. Really? Nightshade? You know that's not gonna really do shit to me, right? Bite this bitch! <laughs> get him out of here! Get out! Bye! So who's gonna be reaching what level, Morty? Because just like your gym trainers, you suck an extreme amount of ass. It's really bad. Morty, that's good game. Uh, I'm not good enough yet. Alright, this badge is yours. <laughs> Might as well be. Give it up, baby. Alright, let me get the fog badge. Badge number four and Jodo gets. By having fog badge, Pokemon up to level 50 will obey you. Also, Pokemon that no surf will be able to use it anytime. I want you to have this, too. And we get TM30. Noise. What is it? That's Shadow Ball. It causes damage and may reduce special defense. Use it if it appeals to you. Cool. I will put that to some very good use. I see. Your journey is taking you to faraway places. And you have witnessed much more than I. I envy you for that. Yeah. It's too bad you're going to be stuck at this gym for like an eternity. Because you're not going to be able to leave. <laughs> As for me, I have a journey to continue. I'm on the road to becoming a Pokemon master. Woo, Mike, you did great. I was cowering in the corner out of pure terror. Pure terror of what? I mean, the Ghastly line is good, but they ain't great. There are way better ghost types. So, yeah. Unfortunately, Morty's gym did not utilize that. Now, if I had to choose a team for Morty and stuff like that. Obviously, Miss Um Mischievous would be a part of that team. What I would do, however, is switch it up and give him a psychic type, at least one psychic type and stuff like that, just to switch it up, so that way nobody would expect it. So I think a good a good team for Morty would be um Haunter, Gengar, Mischievous. And Kadabra. I think I think having Kadabra in there will be like a quick like wait, what the fuck? I mean, even though Kadabra is kinda ass as well, well not really, but in the hands of Morty it would be complete ass. I mean it is it is still gonna it is weak to dark type moves too, just like a ghost type is and stuff. So really there is no real big difference. And stuff like that, but it would surprise the opponent. You know what I mean? So it gives this team a bit more variety. So there you go. But in any case, we got Shadow Ball. Nice. Now think about who you want to get this to, because I think this is the only Shadow Ball team that you can get in the game. Of course, if you're smart and you want it on multiple Pokemon, you could just hack in another Shadow Ball team. You know, it, it, it's it's that easy nowadays to just hack the shit in. In fact, Marine can learn it too. But then again, Marine doesn't really need Shadow Ball. In fact, the one that really needs it is Sakura. So, I'm gonna give it to Sakura. 
In fact, I was planning on giving it to Sakura anyway. That being said, though, get rid of Tackle. We don't need this shit. Get it the fuck out of here. Shadow Ball gets nice. And as I said, Shadow Ball has 80 power. Yes, it does. Sakura with Shadow Ball is a deadly combination, especially since Espeon has really sexy special attack. That, plus, I haven't given my Pokemon the stat boosting vitamins yet from the Goldenrod department store. So, I'm going to give them the vitamins all screen. And next time on Let's Play Pokemon Silver, you will see the sexy results of the stat boost from those vitamins. But now that we have Surf, some side quests have opened up for us now. Now, the thing is, I'm going to wait on that until we get the Fly HM. Because once we get the Fly HM, it'll make backtracking immensely easier. Now, you also have an option here. You have a choice. Now that we have Surf, you can go to the east side of Johto and go to Mahogany Town. Mahogany Town has a gem there. Yeah, Mahogany Town has a gem that you can go to. Unfortunately, when you get there initially, it's going to be closed. So you'll have to do a, a, a little bit of a quest at the Lake of Rage up to the north. Go through the shit in Mahogany Town to, to go through the gym again. Now, this is what I did back in Pokemon Gold. I went to Mahogany Town after Morty. What I'm going to do this time, however, is instead of doing that, I'm going to go like how I did back in the day. And just go through Western Johto and go to Olivine City and see in which city beyond that. By doing that, we can gain access to two more badges. Plus, we'll gain access to the Fly HM as well. So, yeah. How about we head to the beach? Next stop, Olivine City. If you guys enjoy, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel for giving me bits for me. And of course, when you subscribe, be sure to hit the bell to notify my newest uploads. Got something to say? Of course you do. Leave a comment, duh. So next time, dudes and dudettes, this is Mike from Rage Break Gaming. Hope your rage breaks. Have a great day, my bitches and bros. Smile you later.